Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. And uh, I just want to start off by thanking everyone for the support for the channel. Uh, the feedback has been great. The suggestions have been helpful and uh, encouraging. And I got a suggestion from a viewer that was wondering about, you know, if you don't have uh, an airbrush, how would you do a Drake Mallard head? and try to simulate that iridescence. And the, the other thing I thought it would be interesting to do is just, I'll, I'll work on this uh, decoy and we'll repaint this head. This is kind of the factory paint job, but we'll repaint that quickly. And I'm gonna use non-iridescent paints and try to simulate that shine on the, uh, the emerald green head of a, a Drake Mallard. So I've also created a playlist for gunning decoys specifically, and I don't have many videos in there right now, but I think that might be helpful in the long term. That was also a suggestion by a viewer is create a, an area where strict, people strictly interested in gunning, hunting decoys, and doing their own uh, hunting decoys can go. So that playlist will be specifically for those topics. And I'll add this uh, video to that playlist so that it's readily accessible. Anyway, let's get uh, started on this Drake Mallard. Again, this is a plastic decoy, but it's what I had available. And I think we can do a quick demo. And the question is using brushes to create the iridescent green on the head of a Drake Mallard. How do you go about that? What brushes to use? And particularly the challenge of getting a nice blend between the darker values, the, the greens, and then uh, may, if you want to add a little blue on the back of the head. So we'll go through that together and hopefully this will be helpful. If you're valuing the content of my channel, please hit that subscribe button. That does help me out. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't commit you to anything. It just helps me as I continue to build this channel. All right, let's get going. All right, I've got a kind of a one inch wide angled brush. I've got some, these are Josania colors. That's just what I happen to use, but I'm combining phthalo green with carbon black just to come up with a very deep, almost black value to go over this and lay a baseline for the work that we need to do on top of it to simulate that iridescence. And this is the same thing I would do if you were using an airbrush. I do have a separate video on painting a Drake Mallard's head that uses an airbrush, but it might be helpful uh, if you haven't seen that to take a look at that as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of black up the head and get a nice dark value here. I'll get that done and then we'll come back. All right, we've got the head kind of darkened. And again, that was a carbon black with just a touch of phthalo green, so it's not just jet black. You can use black on a gunning decoy and then go ahead with your greens on top of that. I just like to add a little dark green to the mix to start with a a very deep, almost black green base. And now we want to use, I'm going to use a, by the way, these are acrylics. So I'm using water and acrylic paint. This is a filbert brush that's been used for a long time. And what happens when you use a brush for like this for a long time, the uh, bristles at the base here fill up with paint a little bit and it tends to splay the bristles out a little bit, which is a good thing for this type of application because it's, it's a good stiff brush and we can use it to scrub paint on here. And this rounded shape kind of lends itself to this type of a blend that we want to do on the head. Uh, so if you don't have a brush like that, that's a challenge, but you can, you can use a, you could use a chisel shaped brush like this that's brand new and uh, kind of do the same thing. So 
we need to start out with a, we're gonna build up the color intensity kind of in the cheek area and the crown area with different shades of green. And we're gonna start with the dark green. And I'm mixing a little phthalo green with brilliant green to get a, an, I'll call it an emerald color, kind of a mid green value. And if it's too light when I start applying it, I'll add more of the dark green to it. But I kind of got the brush loaded up with quite a bit of paint right now. I've daubed it off on a paper towel. Because one uh, challenge is if you have your paint way too wet uh, and there's too much paint on the brush, it's going to hard to get hard to get a nice soft blend. I'm going to start on the cheek here and begin to lighten this by scrubbing back and forth over it. And as I get to the edges, I want that to fade into the dark value because we want this Mallard Drake to look like his cheek is kind of lighting up in the sun. And now I'm going to do the same thing up here on the crown over the eye. And again, I'm starting with the darker green value. I'm going to leave the area right around the eye dark. And I'm going to join up with this cheek down here again. This is just one way to do this if you don't have... Um, an airbrush and you don't want to use or invest in an airbrush, I certainly get that because that's not for everybody. So you can use a brush like this to create a nice highlight on the head of a Drake Mallard. So I'll keep working this, but I think the key is don't get too much paint on your brush because if you do, Let's just see what happens if I get too much paint on the brush. Then I've got really a lot of paint to work with, and I'm going to have to try to blend that. And it gets hard to blend with that much paint on the brush. It's not doing a terrible job. I mean, I could go ahead and use this. I just want it, and if it's too wet... Let's take a look at that. If I've got too much water in the brush, then it gets very, there's, there's very little blending going on. And then you can try to blend that out and all of a sudden the whole head is bright green, which is what we don't want. To simulate this uh, iridescence, we want kind of Green here on the crown, green on the back of the head and the cheek, maybe a little bit on the cheeks up front, but leave that dark value around it so that it really looks like it's shining in the sun. So I'm gonna unload paint off of this brush by dabbing it on the paper towel and then go back with a little less paint on the brush, try to use this to continue to blend. And as the paint comes off the brush and you've got less and less paint, you can push a little harder, scrub a little more without worrying about it building up too much. I'm gonna put just a little bit of a highlight on the cheek there, a little bit of a highlight coming down the cheek here. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And we want to take this down to close to the neck stripe here. But a nice blend around the corner. The other thing I want to mention, if you 
go a little too far with it. Like I've pulled this green clear back to almost the center line of the head. I want this neck to be dark back here. I can just go back with my black, put a little black on the same brush or on a clean brush and just scrub back in the opposite direction, darken that up a bit. And when I say scrub, start with quite a bit of pressure and then as you get into the blended area, you lighten the pressure on the brush so that you're not driving that black paint to crowd out the green paint. So we've got a decent blend here going. Let's get a better look at that here. Let me get the camera up. So that took about, I don't know, five minutes to get a blend and I'm talking while I'm doing it. Now I want to take a little, so that's kind of a good base blend. It's a gunning decoy. We don't want to spend too much time. I'm going to, I'm going to fade this out a little bit with my black. You can see by just scrubbing over that, I was able to kind of blend that into the green and make it look softer. Okay, now we're going to wash out the brush. And I'm going to go back with a little lighter value because if you look at iridescence, there's, there's often more than one value. So this gets the head the general dark green look. Now I want to put a little lighter green on the crown and on the cheek here just to make it look more iridescent than it does right now. So I'm going to take a little bit of the brilliant green very little i'm dabbing it off again on the paper towel and i'm going into that cheek area and that's not quite a quite enough by the way here's another tip i use a hair dryer not on my hair but on my decoys and uh, that speeds things up so I'm going and the reason I did that um, if this paint is still wet or damp it's going to have a tendency to wipe off as I start to scrub on top of it and I don't want that so now I'm going to hit this with the lighter value up here above the eye right here in the cheek area. I'm gonna hit it just a little bit up here. I'm gonna back the camera off so you can see better. So again, this is the brilliant green. And I've got that same brush not a lot of paint on it and I'm just going in and hitting the highlights areas to give it a little bit more of that iridescent shine look. Hopefully you can see that in the video. So I'll keep working on that but that is basically it and again if you you can't you need to uh, let the first coat dry before you do the second coat or you'll start wiping off the darker green value back to the black. So let me work on this a little bit and then we'll come back. All right, there's a quick look at that and just a word of caution, you can overdo this and uh, brighten up the head too much and it starts to look like a light bulb or unnatural. So just use a little caution and don't go overboard. Uh, the final touch is if you want to do this, there's always a little bit of blue, subtle iridescence as it goes around the head to the back of the neck here. And I've, I've got a little phthalo blue and I've got it on that same brush and I dabbed it off. 
so that we don't have too much paint on the brush again. Kind of a reoccurring theme. And I'm going to go in just to the back of the head here, just with a very light touch, not much paint, and just put a little indication of some blue in that area. I'm scrubbing back and forth. I'm letting the black stay back here. Just a little bit of blue there. And uh, that's about all we need. So that's very, very subtle, but hopefully you can see that a little bit of a blue shade there running along the edge. And again, just a light touch, not a lot of paint. Keep the brush pretty dry and scrub it on like that. One way to do a Drake Mallard head, and it's pretty effective iridescent look without using iridescent paints and just using brushes, no airbrush. By the way, just another quick note, I was using Josanya paints um, because those are the paints that I use most often, but you can also use other types of acrylic. Um, Liquitex is readily available in a lot of hobby stores and Michaels and places like that, probably Hobby Lobby. And this is emerald green, so a nice mid-value. And this is light emerald green, that lighter value, very, very comparable. And uh, I have used these in the past as well. All right, everybody, that was quick video, but that's a wrap on painting a gunning Drake Mallard's head with acrylics using brushes and non-iridescent paint, which is 99% uh, of the gunning decoys out there are not going to be using iridescent paint. And uh, most people are going to be using brushes. And I do find that... Uh, from the feedback, I get that blending is a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of folks know how to carve. Uh, many folks are challenged with the painting aspects of what we do in carving wildfowl. So I hope this video will be helpful to those of you out there that want to do a gunning Drake Mallard. Until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you.